um, up and running and we're oh, yeah. good to go. Okay, whenever you're ready, Wendy. For a bit. You are alive. Please rise as you are able. I now call this meeting of city council to order. We acknowledge that this meeting is taking place on the traditional land of the Anishinaabeg people. The Anishinaabeg include the Odawa, Ojibwe, and Potawatomi nations, collectively known as the Three Fires Confederacy. We're dedicated to honoring Indigenous history and culture and committed to moving forward in the spirit of reconciliation and respect with all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people. You may be seated. Apologies, the uh, awkwardness of remote technology continues, uh, but here we are. Uh, tonight's city council meeting, of course, is being held virtually with members of council, the executive management team, and the city clerk participating via video conference. Senior leadership team that have uh, reports on tonight's agenda are not visible, but they are available to answer any questions. Uh, tonight, before we begin, we need to remember uh, a former alderman for the city of Barrie who passed away on the weekend. Uh, his passing is the passing of an era and an enormous loss uh, for the city of Barrie. He's one of the finest gentlemen I've ever had the pleasure of knowing and in fact working with because he continued to work for the city right up to and including the weeks before his uh, death. Uh, Rob Warman was born in Fredericton, New Brunswick. After high school, he served with the RCMP in Newfoundland and then joined the Royal Canadian Air Force Military Police as a corporal. He served as an Air Force policeman for 20 years, serving in almost every province in Canada as well as overseas. He spent two years in France and five years in Germany with NATO during the Cold War. He was posted from Zweibrück in Germany in 1969 to the Military Police Academy at Canadian Forces Base Borden and retired from the military in 1974 with passion and dedication for his country. After retiring from the military, Rob joined the faculty at Georgian College, and he began teaching in the law and security program, uh, administration program, ended as the chairman of the School of Business in 1994, after another 20-year career serving his community, this time as an educator working at Georgian College. His professional accolades are certainly too numerous to mention. He was always held in very, very high regard for his work and expertise. He was first elected to Barrie City Council in 1980, and he began working diligently for his residents right away. He was one of the instrumental individuals who uh, helped create a sports complex in Barrie, and especially uh, in bringing the Lake Simcoe Regional Airport to our region. Uh, and as well, of course, was key in the development of our relationship with our twin city, city excuse me, of Zweibrück in Germany. Uh, he was very, very proud to be able to celebrate so much of our rich history and build that tie between the Canadian military's legacy uh, in Zweibrook and over the course of 25 years uh, and, uh, and our community. While his last term as a counselor ended in 2003, he remained, remained devoted to serving the public. <clears throat> he became the honorary Colonel of 16 Wing at Base Borden in 2006, served as a board member for a, a huge number of organizations, he was an active and longstanding member of our city's International Relations Committee, and that's an understatement. He was just a stalwart believer and supporter and hard worker as part of that. 
uh, program. We volunteered with the Barrie Youth Ambassadors and Global Perspectives, as well as many, many other organizations, committees, and projects. And he was also the chairman of the Sir Robert Barry Committee, which has focused on sharing the life and history of our city's namesake. And of course, due to the efforts of this committee, uh, the city of Barrie announced this week that the group has been awarded the city's Heritage Award for 2021. Uh, Rob was just a force to be reckoned with. I know Deputy Mayor Ward uh, rightly said, you know, when Rob got behind a project, it got done. He led a tremendous life and his contributions to, be, to Barry have been absolutely remarkable. And so on behalf of City Council and all of our residents tonight, I wanna offer our condolences to Alice and his children. Rob will certainly be missed by all uh, but remembered most for his passion and commitment to our city. We'll miss you, Rob. All right, our first business item tonight is confirmation of the minutes. The minutes of the city council meeting held on December 13th, 2021 have been circulated. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Okay, seeing none, the minutes are adopted as printed and circulated. Tonight, we have uh, two deputations that were requested in advance. One emergency deputation request. The emergency deputation request is from Kathy Colbatch concerning motion 22G0006, Holly Community Center naming rights. As the request was received after the printing of the agenda, a two thirds majority vote is required by council in order for the emergency deputation to proceed. So I will call the question. All those in favor of allowing the emergency deputation, please indicate. And opposed? One, that carries. Emergency deputation will proceed. Okay, I will call out the names of uh, each of the deputants as listed on the council agenda. Once your name is called, once you're into the, uh, and we'll bring you into the call, please unmute yourself. If you happen to be on a phone, you do that by pressing hashtag six. Uh, uh, please note in accordance, of course, with the city's procedural bylaw, maximum of five minutes is permitted per deputation. So I will start by calling on Nicola Mitchison of Mitchison Planning and Development and Jerry Pilon of Salter Pilon Architects. We're speaking on behalf of the owners uh, 201-2292 Ontario Limited, that's PBM Realty Holdings, uh, to deliver a deputation concerning motion 21P033, that's the zoning bylaw amendment application for 217 Dunlop Street. Mr. Pilon, Ms. Mitchison, welcome to Barry City Council and the floor is yours. Good evening, your worship and members of council. Thank you for the introduction. As noted, my name is Nicola Mitchinson. I'm a registered professional planner and the principal of Mitchinson Planning and Development Consultants. I'm here this evening on behalf of our client, PBM Realty Holdings at Link, Inc., who have a project at 217 Dunlop Street East. Also attending with me this evening is another member of our team, Jerry Pilon, who is the architect on the project. <clears throat> Pardon me. We are speaking in support of planning committee motion P-21P-033 that was adopted by planning committee on their December 7th, 2021 meeting. And that recommendation was in support of planning staff's recommendation to actually support the application. And that's outlined in items one through five of that particular motion. We're also pleased to provide additional information that was requested by the committee as part of that motion in item number six, where additional uh, plans were, re were requested to demonstrate the built form or massing of this project based on the as of right C2-1 zone provisions on the site. So that information has been provided. It was provided in advance uh, to staff so that it could make the council agenda for this evening. And we also have a PowerPoint presentation, which I will share with you. There is a lot of information that I need to convey in a very short period of time. So I'm going to speak quickly and to the point. So please bear with me. And uh, obviously we'll have a discussion afterwards if and as required. So on that note, I'm going to share my screen and hopefully commence the PowerPoint presentation. Oh. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid you're going to have to see the panels down the side. 
because the controls of the um, Zoom are blocking my ability to start the actual slideshow. Is that satisfactory to everybody just to have it formatted the way it is? So um, here we are, deputation. Uh, first slide. The second slide is um, an identification of the property location, just to reorient, reorient everybody. As you know, the property is located along Dunlop Street East and the North Shore Trail. It's within the city's urban growth center, which is a very important consideration and within the city's, uh, uh, the city center. The Flamenco subdivision, uh, sorry, the Flamenco condominium, eight stories and a little bit more is located to the, to the west. And the Lack House uh, project is currently under construction uh, just to the west of that. As you can see from this slide, it is a mixed use neighborhood comprised of a variety of housing forms, densities. We have 15 story buildings to the west of the site. We have 15 stories to the east of the site. It's also on the periphery of the urban growth center, uh, which essentially is the extension of Bursey Street. And on the east side of that extension is a fairly exclusive and affluent neighborhood um, along Dunlop Street East, along the extension of Kempenfeld Drive, and also as you head north towards Dundonald and the, the um, uh, exclusive neighborhoods that occur in that, in that general area. So in considering the development of this property, we had a number of very important planning objectives and principles, both at the provincial level and at the city level that we were trying to balance. How do we achieve multiple objectives? In some instances, they, they can be conflicting. We have a prime waterfront property located in the urban growth center on, a, on, our, on an arterial road. It's a brownfield site. It's adjacent to the North Shore Trail in a mixed use neighborhood, but also on the border of uh, a, a historical affluent neighborhood. So as when we balanced and reviewed all these various planning principles, we determined that the best use of this site, the most appropriate use of this site and a built form that would certainly achieve these multitude of planning objectives would be a, a, an executive condominium project with a low number of units, so ranging anywhere from 21 to 44 units, in a taller building rather than a wider building. And we felt that that was more appropriate for this, this type of neighborhood. It facilitated significant view corridors of the bay. It allows for a connection to the North Shore Trail and Kempenfelt Bay and it maintains the character of the neighborhoods to the east by vertically accommodating um, larger, more expensive units. Ms. Mitchison, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, deputations are only five minutes and you've only got about a minute and a half left. Oh dear. So I wanna All make right. sure you get to the work that Thank I you. know has been done since our last meeting. Thank, Thank you. you for the time check. On that basis, I'm going to then just go straight to the next uh, slide, which is the separation distances, which I think are very critical to this project. You'll see that as a consequence of the uh, pedestrian trail that will lead to the North Shore Trail, the separation distance of this building to the Flamenco is up to 55 feet. It's a very significant separation distance and a significant view corridor. We've worked very closely with the owners of the Flamenco to make sure that they're satisfied with the 15 stories and they're even more happy with the reduced building um, to 12 to 13 stories. On the east side, the separation distance varies from about 20 feet to 30 feet. And we also have separation distances in the rear yard. A zero rear yard setback is permitted as of right under the zoning. So we have certainly up lots of opportunities for landscaping buffers and uh, inter attractive interfaces between this building and other uses. 
This development chart, uh, council may have already had a chance to review it, but we felt it was important to put this development, 217 East Dunlop, in context with other developments that have been recently approved in the city. You can work your way through, because I know we're running out of time. I'm happy to answer any questions. Rock Cap and this development were selected particularly because of their similarities with our project and with the location of this project. So I'll just quickly jump to the slide that shows the relationship of those projects. This is our project at 217, which is on the periphery of the Urban Growth Center. The McDonald Owen development across from the library is also on the periphery of the Urban Growth Center, the Northern periphery of the Growth Center. And the Rock Cap development that was approved the same night as our particular application with 23 exceptions to the zoning bylaw is not located within the Urban Growth Center. It's located on an intensification corridor uh, along Bayfield Street. So those were very specific. Those uh, applications and staff reports and recommendations were specifically referenced given the similarities to the project. Just to give you an idea of built form, this, this is the, uh, the built form that council approved for the rock cap development on, or sorry, planning committee on December the 7th. This is the built form that was approved for the McDonald Street, Owen Street. Here's the public library a couple of years ago, uh, immediately adjacent to single detached dwellings on the periphery of the Urban Growth Center. Uh, this is an architectural rendering of the same building. And actually this is the side of the building. It faces east, immediately abutting single family uh, residents with a three meter separation distance. Having said all that, let's jump to the, the big enchilada, which is the um, planning committee's request for massing plans to demonstrate how the proposed building relates to the as of right building envelopes permitted on the site. This diagram is based on a template that was provided to us by city staff. The yellow, shading and the red lines identify the building envelope on this site that is permitted as of right on the C2-1 zone. You can see that there's a lot of building areas that I'm pointing to that actually aren't building, are not part of the building that, that we're proposing. So there's a lot of mass to this building that is not the same mass as the, as the 217 proposal. Essentially, we have vertical density rather than horizontal density. And I think that that will be more obvious in some of the other slides. You can see, again, all the yellow is would be built form permitted under the existing zoning, a zero meter setback from the uh, rail trail, a three meter setback versus the extensive setbacks that I identified uh, on the site plan on the west side of the property beside the flamenco. Here's another version. So we did it, we, we um, undertook the analysis from all angles so that again, members of council could see the yellow relative to the blue. So it's vertical density versus horizontal density. The horizontal density certainly has more of an impact on the at the ground level and on the ability to maximize our view corridors to the lake. Ms. Mitchison, I've given you quite a bit of extra time. I'm afraid I'm gonna to have to ask you to wrap up. Thanks very much. I will wrap up. Thank you for your patience and your time. It is our respectful opinion that the, uh, that the application as proposed, as supported by staff and as supported by planning committee represents good planning and is in the public interest. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Ms. Mitchison. And we do have the um, uh, correspondence that was submitted to council as well in support of the deputation, including the, um, the images that you showed in the slideshow. So uh, members of council, any questions of the deputant? Councilor Ripma. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And just one, um, uh, first of all, thank you very much for the uh, extensive work that you've done. And um, it certainly helps to uh, give us all a picture of, of the building and uh, how it is impacted. Um, 
I wanted to ask you one question, and that is, are you going to be able to build this building um, without encroaching on the North Shore Trail when you come to construction? Uh, through you, Mayor Lehman, to Councillor Reitma. The answer is yes, as far as we know at this stage, and certainly will that will be confirmed at the site plan stage. The building currently is set back about 2.7 meters from the North Shore Trail. There are a few areas where it's a little bit closer, about 0.7 of a meter, and that's only in certain sections where the stairs come out of the parking lot. So it's our intention, and certainly we wouldn't be proposing to build on public property to contain the building within the building envelope. Also, we have a record of site condition and a certificate of property use that determines and specifies, this is issued by the Minister of the Environment, former Minister of the Environment, now multiple uh, syllables and names, um, that specifies the type of construction that has to occur on site in accordance to deal with this brownfield site. If I could add to that, Nicola, through you, Mayor Lehman, and members of council, um, you know, when it comes time to actually construct this building, it'll be constructed in a similar fashion to Lack House with staging uh, from the Dunlop Street side, and will have minimal or negligible impact to the North Shore Trail. That is the plan. Okay, thanks. That's the answer that I wanted to hear. Thanks. Thanks very much for that. Any other questions for the deputant members of council? Okay, uh, seeing none, thank you, Ms. Mitchison. Thank you, Mr. Pilon, for being here. That matter, of course, is uh, up on tonight's agenda just a little bit later. We'll get to it shortly. Great. Thank you very much for the opportunity. All right, our second deputation tonight is from Jennifer Van Genup uh, with regards to the Housing Affordability Task Force. That's motion 22G007. Ms. Van Getup, welcome to City Council. And in accordance with the procedural bylaw, you have up to five minutes for your deputation. Great, thank you. The Scatterberry chapter wishes to thank the Housing Affordability Task Force for this important report. And we thank City Council for your initial support of the recommendations last week. As I've said here many times, housing is a human right. This is enshrined in international and federal law. But what does that mean for policymakers? According to the United Nations, the law requires governments to implement reasonable policies and programs within available resources to ensure that all people have access to housing within the shortest possible time. It also means that priority must be given to those who currently have no housing. It doesn't mean that governments have to house all citizens overnight, but it puts the responsibility on the government, not the individual in a housing crisis, to prevent homelessness. Leilani Farha, the former special rapporteur to the UN on adequate housing says, law is not meaningful unto itself. Law is only meaningful when people take it, use it and run with it. We believe that the recommendations in this task force report move us toward that and do prioritize those who currently do not have any housing within the scope of resources and policy tools available to the city. We are especially pleased to see the commitment of $5 million to create a fund for supportive housing with the goal of addressing chronic homelessness and the request for the county to match it two to one. As a built for zero community, the County of Simcoe has made a commitment to end chronic homelessness by the end of 2024. So we hope to see them take advantage of this opportunity to partner with the city in this way. We noted that during last week's discussion of the warming center request at general committee, Councillor Jim Harris asked what SCADA's position was on this. The Scatterberry chapter is in full support. Everyone deserves a safe, affordable, hopeful place to call home. And when that's the case, our entire community benefits. In the meantime, the very least we can do is make sure our unhoused neighbors have a safe, consistent way to stay reasonably warm during the winter. The shelter system has expanded to offer beds to meet the growing need. And this has no doubt saved lives and provided a completely adequate option for many. We are grateful for the SCADA member agencies that make up Barry's shelter system and their tireless efforts throughout this pandemic and before. Shelter providers have also readily acknowledged that that setting doesn't work for everyone. Busby's most recent outreach estimates from last week are that there are still about 65 people outside. We would note that not wanting to go into the shelter is not the same as not wanting to get inside. 
At our most recent chapter meeting, several examples were shared why someone might not be able to stay in shelter. These included stigma, anxiety, fear of contracting COVID, wanting to stay together as a couple, pets, needing to be able to come and go more freely than permitted in that setting, and also being temporary, <laughs> temporarily sorry, restricted from accessing the shelter. For this reason, the chapter supports having other options even when respite beds are open. And we support the creation of a warming center even with the Busby Center opening the eight spots at the 88 Moncaster location last week, especially since those eight spots were all full last night. They in fact um, had nine people staying there last night. Furthermore, we agree with council members that this should not be a conversation we have in January each year. And we need to have a more proactive approach to winter. Thank you for your unanimous support of this initiative at General Committee and what we hope to be unanimous support again this week. Thank you, Ms. Van Gennep. Any uh, questions for the deputant? <clears throat> Councillor Jim Harris. Uh, thank you, Mayor Lehman, and thank you, uh, Ms. Van Gennep, and uh, thank you for also for um, bringing the perspective of SCADA. If I can ask a question, I know you're um, <clears throat> very closely connected and involved. Is the, is the current effort um, being coordinated such that, um, you know, as we coordinate and uh, the uh, shelter system and uh, many years ago started the central intake for shelter system in combination with the out of the cold. Uh, is the warming center effort uh, being effectively um, uh, 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 worked with the partners involved? Is, is it being collaborative and, and connected such that it will work effectively is given the, the challenges and all the, the concerns that uh, are attached to it? Uh, I would say, yeah, from, from what I'm seeing, there is every effort to be collaborative with this and make sure that it is a uh, an option that complements the shelter system and doesn't take away from it just offers another option but but works uh, works together with shelter providers thank you and is there a sense from the SCADA group and the work and you talked about having a plan for uh 2023 that's <laughs> winter of 2023 that that you're talking about a warming center singular um, is there a thought that there would be a warming center singular, uh, well um, coordinated, or is there a thought that would be warming centers plural? Is that is that um, too early, or is that part of the current discussions with SCADA? That that probably falls outside of SCADA's mandate. Um, we aren't a funded <laughs> organization. We're just, as you know, a coalition of organizations uh, working together. So I would say that would have a lot more to do with conversations with the county around funding. And then I think also, as you are probably aware, we're pulling together a coordinated access system over the next few months. And so some, uh, some pieces of what warming centers look like next year may, may come together through that as well. Uh, thank you again. And mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Mayor Lehman. That's all for me. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Harris. Uh, Councillor Morales. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Van Gennep, uh, do you have any feedback about the presentation from last week um, as it relates to the to the non um, efforts to end homelessness or transitional housing, th things of that nature, specifically more to uh, home home purchase affordability or rent affordability? Obviously, there's there's a big spectrum and literally it's in the names in Go County, I believe Alliance 10 homelessness. So that's obviously where you did the presentation there. But I know that you had some really good uh, deputation comments uh, back in June of 2021 or May 2021, if I'm getting my, my timeline correct, I'm wondering if you had some feedback on, on, on that. And since obviously the task force addresses uh, 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 homelessness and housing people, as well as rent, renting and making home ownership more affordable. Do you have any feedback on those aspects? Uh, thank you. Through you, I have, um, through you, Mayor Lehman, to Councillor Morales, I have lots of personal opinions about the <laughs> about housing policy. Um, I thought overall, I thought the task force report um, had lots of great suggestions. And I do, I, what I saw was a, a balance between, um, like, we're not gonna be able to necessarily build our way out of this, but I saw some long-term, some, some policies and some, some suggestions, recommendations that would have long-term effects. Um, as far as the chapter 
was concerned the conversation focused around the efforts to support social housing and ending homelessness. But um, I could go through it again and, and pull together some notes for you if you'd like around the other recommendations, but um, that particular, the one around uh, social housing and supportive housing to end chronic homelessness is what we kind of prepared remarks for for today. Is okay, perfect. Right? Yeah, we can connect offline. I know okay. you and I have had some good phone calls since your deputation, so we can connect yeah. offline. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Council Morales. Any other questions for the deputy? Okay, seeing none. Thank you, Ms. Van Gennep, for thank being you. here and giving that deputation. You're welcome, thanks. Uh, last deputation tonight is the emergency deputation requested by Kathy Kolbach. Uh, Ms. Kolbach, uh, just uh, give us a second here. Councillor Natalie Harris, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Uh, through you, I'm going to declare a potential conflict as I have family members who own a real estate business. So I'm going to turn my video and mic off. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, has Councillor Natalie Harris's potential interest been recorded? Yes, Mayor Lehman, it has. Okay, thank you very much. Ms. Kolbach uh, is here to make the emergency deputation on the renaming of the Holly Community Center. Ms. Kolbach, welcome to City Council, and I'm sure I don't need to tell you, under your procedural bylaw, deputations are up to five minutes, and the floor is yours. Thank you so much. And everybody can hear me. I wasn't sure I did unmute myself. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, so Mayor Lehman, members of council and staff, thank you for allowing my emergency deputation this evening. I'm here to speak to the concerns I have with respect to the renaming of the Holly Rec Center. T to start, I would like to recognize and thank the Peggy Hill team for stepping up and answering the city's call for sponsorship at this location. Peggy Hill and team are an integral part of our community and continue to sponsor such organizations as the YMCA of Simcoe Muskoka, Berry Food Bank, Autism Ontario, Gildas Club, and Hospice Simcoe, to name a few. It is clear comments made in social media have indicated a concern for these changes, not only from the Holly community itself, but others throughout the city of Barrie. As mentioned by Doug Lohe in a Barrie Today article, and many agree, Holly has a long history that many newcomers may not be aware of. Originally part of Innisfil, roots go back to the mid 1800s, a small farming community with general store, church, school, post office, a women's association, and a number of World War I veterans. Typically community centers, libraries and arenas are named for the location and community they are located. Painswick Public Library, Stroud Arena, Innisfil Rec Center, Holly Rec Center, Allendale Rec Center all have one thing in common, a cultural gathering place for our communities. Some councillors re may remember how residents reacted to potential renaming of Barry South and Allendale Go stations, or when we tried to rename some of our historic neighbourhoods. Could a compromise be made that might be more palatable to residents? It appears the naming rights agreement is for the exterior and not interior. Arena one and two, the aquatic, fitness and youth center, as well as the multi-purpose room are also open to sponsorship. Perhaps city staff and the Piggy Hill team would consider some variation of internal sponsorship so we don't lose the Holly name. Or would the city and the Piggy Hill team consider adding, keeping the Holly name perhaps come up with three choices through a public contest to engage the public and vote on, i.e. Peggy Hill team at Holly Community Center or Peggy Hill Community Center at Holly, just as examples. Holly has a history and cultural relevance. Based on the financials outline, the cost to make these changes is approximately $45,000. The cost is recovered in the first $80,000 payment, I believe. The proceeds from this agreement will be allocated to the operating budget. Will this help reduce our tax dollars? And if so, by how much? And why aren't any of these proceeds going directly back to rec center improvements and programming? Could a portion of the $80,000, say 40,000, be set aside annually over the duration of the agreement that would go directly to the center's budget? What benefit will the community see? While the marketing and communication is clearly a benefit to the applicant, how do we as a community benefit? That's unclear to me in a way. 
What happens in eight years when this agreement runs out? We either renew or go through yet another name change. Thank you for your time and consideration. I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Colbatch. Uh, questions for the deputant, uh, Councillor Thompson. Thanks, Mayor Lehman. Um, through you too, Ms. Colbatch. Thank you um, for your deputation. Just a question. Um, you know, I appreciate how engaged you are in our community and you're no you know, stranger to deputations at council. And, and I appreciate the uh, input that you bring to our meetings. Um, can you just answer why you felt today was the time to do the deputation when this is when in front of council, I think it's almost four times and not leading up, like leading up to this point of naming like it was published that the Holly Rec Center was on a pilot project. There's a few others. Um, so I was just wondering, like, it, is it the name or is it the process of, of naming rec centers? You know, in 2000, I think it was 15. And then again in 17, we approved uh, an intake form for a sponsorship employee um, in the budget, which Holly was named again as a potential um, building of sponsorship. So I was just curious why um, it's basically now that we've had somebody come forward and it's a deputation where, it, and I know that you're not in any way trying to, um, you know, take away from the Peggy Hill team, but it's a little bit like we're far down the rabbit hole, if I may say, like now it's the, the poor um, business is getting, you know, beat up on social media, which, uh, you know, most people who are for it on social media would never voice their opinion because, you know, the, the threat of being, you know, harassed. So I, I'm just curious if you can, you know, let me know. Uh, well, counsel. Certainly, I, uh, I certainly don't have um, an issue with the, the naming at all um, in terms of whether it's, you know, Peggy Hill community, it's just really the, the Holly, the name Holly. Um, so there are, uh, and I've just recently seen a list of other um, locations. And I understand from a conversation with uh, Kim, I think her name is Breeden, who is the sponsorship coordinator. I spoke with her today a little bit. And, you know, there are um, naming other locations, so some maybe some of the dog parks and some of the other locations that are really not as, I will say, important um, in terms of whether you call the dog park or even rename a skateboard park or rename uh, something other than a rec center or a community center that was actually named for the community that it sits in. So I just think that lends confusion to people. Um, so, you know, as far as why I didn't come forward before now, I didn't really know the um, end result of all of this. So I hadn't been following that along through the years, to be honest, Councillor Thompson, but this certainly was an, our opportunity to speak publicly. And, um, you know, as for, you know, the emergency deputation, I mean, I, it's taken me a little while to get through the uh, Christmas and uh, New Year's season, and we had some health issues in the family. So here I am. Um, so I, you know, I think, uh, you know, I, I just think that we really need to be careful. And I did, um, Councillor Harris tonight sent me a list of other potential locations, which um, I certainly didn't see issue with most of them, except maybe one. And I understand the one that I might have had an issue with has been removed from that list. So, you know, that's, that's encouraging. That's certainly encouraging. And, I, you know, I think, you know, at, like, I, I don't know where the public was engaged other than at this, at this juncture either. So there was really no public engagement to say, this is what we're doing. You know, would you like to be a part of it? Come out and, um, and did, did we have meetings with, you know, these departments, like sometimes we do where you engage, like we're doing, you know, stuff on Heritage Park, where there are those meetings held, and maybe I just missed them. Perfect. Um, 
this you know, is important to residents for sure. And I, and I, you know, I want to apologize on behalf of all of our citizens who were and, and did have nasty comments out there because that's not the place to do it. Councillor Johnson. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm sorry to hear about the uh, illness in the families and stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, just a follow up. Um, and because you're very involved with Heritage Berry, um, the little family was the naming of Holly. Now, Holly itself, does it have a history? Like, because there was Holly, <laughs> Ivy. Uh, so it, to me, um, we actually honored the little family with Little Road. <laughs> so it's the little family that owned the farm and everything. So I'm just, I'm, I'm having a little bit of trouble with this. Like, and like the Holly Rec Center was not part of this. No. And, 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 and you are correct in that. Um, Holly actually was originally a part of Venniceville. And so it's, um, you know, it would be great to be able to put together a map and show you where that extended from. But uh, it did go Maple View uh, down Highway 27. And a lot of people will remember the Shula Vista property. I think where um, the old um, uh, retaining wall is, and we had discussions about that at council meetings a while back. Um, that was a landmark for a lot of people coming in through Holly. So you came in through Holly, uh, 27, Highway 27, you would come down from Maple View. Um, and it also went over to and included oh, uh, Big Bay Point Road. So there's, there's actually in the Innisfil uh, historical review booklets, there is quite a history of Holly as well. So a lot of people don't know it because they don't read this information, but it is out there. Perfect. So, so just to sum it up, Holly was just a name given by the family, but the Holly is not a, oh, another Holly family would, yeah. or... It wasn't, uh, it was just a name basically to the family, the little family. The same as, sure, the same as Allendale would be just a name, the yeah. same as, you know, Panther Stroud Ballard, or Vespra. Payne. Yeah. That's right. That's correct. Yes. Perfect. Thank you for your perspective. Yeah, right. no, problem. no problem. Any other questions of the deputy members of council? Councilor Morales. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Kolbach. Um, just before I start my question, um, I want to clarify, I think you got unanimous support for your deputation. I just held my yes one too long, so I got counted a, as a no, but that's on me. Um, my question to you is as follows. So just to be clear from the questions and comments you got from Councillor Thompson, you're not against the specific company, um, person, whatever, um, that, that is here before, but you're just concerned about the benefit that we're getting in terms of money for the, I guess the sacrifice of the of the Holly aspect name so your concern really has to do with just the policy of even entertaining this with community rec centers right now just one um, but the basically the the road that we are engaging on is that is that is that accurate to say if I understood you correctly um, yes I'm not against the name per se or the company or whoever is doing this it's more about losing that holly that historical that cultural relevance um so if that name could be somehow kept there whether it's on the exterior and that's why i talked about maybe there could be an internal sponsorship and leave the holly name or add the holly name in some variation to the peggy hill uh community center at holly so there's Whatever. probably been, for the, sorry for the general public there's probably been more discussions about the history of Holly in the area in the last three weeks than right. there probably among the general public mm -hmm. uh, than there probably has been in in, in in years and years and years so if anything this has been a good discussion right <laughs> people right. learning people discovering people wanting to have that passion do you think there's an opportunity for yourself advocates of heritage the heritage committee in general I guess you could only speak on behalf of yourself, but do you think there's an opportunity for all interested parties to maybe take what some people might perceive as lemons, not everybody, turn it into lemonade, and mm -hmm. maybe in the inside of Holly, when you're walking into that foyer on some sort of wall that maybe is not programming or let's maybe rejig it, where there's this kind of 
mosaic of sorts where it says, welcome to the, if, if this gets approved, the Peggy Hill Team Community Center, mm-hmm. uh, an, a, you know, a testament to the heritage of the, of the area and this wall that kind of transitions. And I don't know if you've had the time to, uh, to go to Domino's Pizza, for example, in the North End uh, in Ward 3, they're off Kendall St. Vincent. They've incorporated, you know, a, a tribute to the history of the area into their walls, their wallpaper. They have Allendale train station. They have really good paintings and design. So that's corporate, private sector. But in the public sector, I'm thinking where somebody comes in, there's a lot of waiting that happens in rec centers when you're so, talking. Sorry, to sorry to interrupt, Councilor Morales, but it's just questions of clarification. And I would just remind all members of council, last week we did amend the motion to do exactly what you're describing, of course. Council yeah. uh, did amend the motion to ensure that the history would be documented through plaques and other educational material inside the community center. So I'll just Great. ask you to get to your question. Yeah. Great. Okay, cool. Um, so Ms. Kovac, do you think that, that that balance while still naming the outside of the building would um, achieve your goals of uh, recognition of, of, an, of, of an area specifically to the Holly Rec Center? And I think last week we also mentioned uh, not only, you know, the Holly Rec Center building itself, but also perhaps the Holly Library doing something with the library. And it doesn't even have to be in the building. It can be in and around specific locations as we've talked about doing in other historic neighborhoods. We wanna get away from all of that information being at the waterfront and out into each of the historic communities. So let me refine my question. Is, is what we passed last week good enough? Well, uh, that, that, that goes, you know what? It's a perfect balance. Go ahead and name the outside of the building. Or does that, what I'm hearing in your comments is that's good, but no, you still prefer to see the outside not named. I just want a very clear, dele- uh, le- 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 uh, or, like. Okay, we'll let Ms. Colbatch answer, go ahead. So I, the, for, I would like to see if you're asking me, Yes, Heritage Berry would probably love to do something related to this. We've, in fact, talked about Holly through uh, previous meetings we have at our neighborhood association, Allendale Neighborhood Association. But um, as far as, you know, asking me personally, based on reading a lot of comments in social media and a lot of, like you say, there's been an awful lot of talk about the heritage and historical value of it, um, only just coming to light in the last three weeks, that's exciting. I would still like to see the Holly name remain in there somewhere. That's all. Got it. Okay. Well, if, you, if, if you add it at the end of the Peggy Hill, whatever, or somewhere, that's that would be my ask. Okay, thanks very much. Any other questions of clarification of the deputant? Seeing none, Ms. Kolvach, thank you as thank always for being here, you. giving your perspective. Thank you. And uh, we will move on with our business agenda for this evening. Uh, the first item of business, I believe we're at the committee reports. Just a moment. Yeah, uh, Deputy Mayor Ward, I think you've got the motions first for planning committee from December 7th. I do. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Thompson, that section A of the planning committee report dated December 7th, 2021, is circulated to be adopted. Thank you. Just bear with me a moment here while I pull up my own copies of the motions. It is moved by Deputy Mayor Ward and seconded by Councillor Thompson that the Planning Committee, Section A of the Planning Committee report dated December 7th as circulated be adopted. This is the Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application 112 and 136 Bayfield, 14 Sophia Street West, 113 and 115 Maple Avenue, Rock App Holdings. This was a consent item at planning committee. Comments or questions on section A? Okay, seeing none, call the question. Those in favor, please indicate. Anyone opposed? None, that carries unanimously. Section B, please. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Thompson. The section B of the planning committee report dated December 7th, 2021 is circulated to be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Ward, seconded by Councillor Thompson. The section B of the planning committee report dated December 7th, 2021 is circulated to be received. This is to receive the uh, two public meetings from the December 7th meeting, the report of the two public meetings that was concerning a 953 Maple View Drive East in Ward 10 and 108, 116 and 122 Harvey Road in Ward 6. Comments or questions is to be received. Seeing none, call the question. Those in favor? 
Anybody opposed? None. That carries. Uh, section C, please, Deputy Mayor Warren. Move by myself, seconded by Councillor Thompson. That Section C of the Planning Committee report dated December 7, 2021, is certainly to be adopted. Thank you. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Ward, seconded by Councillor Thompson, that Section C of the Planning Committee report dated December 7th, 2021, has circulated be adopted. This is to adopt the zoning bylaw amendment uh, for 217 Dunlop Street, uh, PBM Realty Holdings in Ward 2. This was the subject of the first deputation tonight. Comments or questions on Section C? Councillor Rigma. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, First of all, I'm a very much appreciative of the work that uh, the applicant has done since our last meeting. Um, I think it, it demonstrates, and it demonstrates to me that um, this building is still too big and still too close to uh, the North Shore Trail, no matter that um, uh, what the existing zoning is. Um, so um, I'm uh, still going to vote against it. Um, but I must say that I do appreciate the fact that um, that the applicant has done the work that they have. Um, and I also appreciate very much the answers uh, that they gave tonight, um, uh, indicating that uh, they would not need to use the North Shore Trail in order to build this building. Um, so um, that, that's my view of this application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Reed. My Councillor Aylwin. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Uh, I would have appreciated the, the opportunity to speak first uh, as the ward counselor, but that's that's all right. Um, so um, last meeting, uh, I did vote to uh, request the information um, on this proposal, and I want to thank the, the applicant for providing that. I think it's clear from the renderings that the massing um, with the uh, the zoning that would be allowed as of right, the current zoning on the property, um, would actually create a building that would have um, smaller setbacks, would have more of an impact on the immediate neighbors on the North Shore Trail uh, and on, on the street. So um, I think the design that they are proposing through uh, this zoning bylaw amendment actually would have less of an impact at street level. So um, I will be supportive of uh, the, the zoning bylaw amendment that's before council tonight. Thank you. Any other comments on section C, members of council? Okay, seeing none, I will call the question. Those in favor of the motion, please indicate. I am as well, opposed, one. That carries 10 to one. Thank you. Uh, section D, please, Deputy Mayor Ward. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Thompson, that Section D of the Planning Committee report dated December 7th, 2021 be adopted. Thank you. It is moved by Deputy Mayor Ward, seconded by Councillor Thompson, that Section D of the Planning Committee report uh, dated December 7th as circulated be adopted. This is the Zoning Bylaw Amendment application for 407, 411, 413, 417, and 419 Maple View Drive West. Comments, questions, and amendments on section D. Nothing on for, uh, this is the deferral motion, just to be clear. Uh, this is not to adopt this matter. I know it is, is a subject of some interest. Okay, so we're adopting the deferral motion on section D if you vote in favor of this. So uh, comments or questions, seeing none, I'll call the question, those in favor? Anybody opposed? One. That carries 10 to one. Okay, uh, that completes the uh, planning committee report from December 7th. December 14th planning committee report is next. Deputy Mayor Ward, go ahead. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Thompson. The planning committee report dated December 14th, 2021 be received. Thank you, it's moved by Deputy Mayor Ward, seconded by Councillor Thompson. That the planning committee report dated December 14th, 2021 be received. This is to receive the public meeting that was held on that date uh, regarding 405 Essa Road. It's just to receive the report. Comments or questions? Seeing none, those in favor of receiving the report? Is anyone opposed? None, that one's unanimous. Uh, okay, that brings us to the general committee report from last week, Deputy Mayor Ward, go ahead. Moved by, move by myself, seconded by Councillor Thompson, that section A of the general committee report dated January 10th, 2022 be adopted. It is moved by Deputy Mayor Ward, seconded by Councillor Thompson, Section A of the General Committee report dated January 10th, 
2022 be adopted. These were the consent items, or these are the consent items from last week. That was the ICE allocation policy five-year review, invitation uh, to Simcoe County to present to city council, review of options for delivery of long-term care facilities, and reinstating the program for residents supporting local restaurants through parking ticket waivers. Uh, in exchange for restaurant receipts. Uh, Councillor Thompson, comment. Thanks, Mayor Lehman. Um, I have an amendment. Okay, go ahead. Um, so moved by myself, second by Deputy Mayor Ward, that motion 22G02, Section A of the General Committee report dated January 10, 2022 be amended by adding the following paragraph. That the County of Simcoe work with the City of Barrie and the appropriate community partners on developing additional permanent warming space solutions and report to the city staff, sorry, and that city staff report back to General Committee on the item at their meeting scheduled for September 12th, 2022, mm -hmm. and I can speak to that. Go ahead, Councillor Thompson. Thanks, Mayor Lehman. Um, last week, uh, there was a lot of discussion about this and there were some amendments and stuff where um, we're, we're actually very in line of what we need. And uh, I, I appreciate all the work and, and actually the attention this has been bringing to the community and stuff. And my, my only concern um, in last week's amendments were it by lowering the temperature, it increases the frequency of the, the temporary shelter, um, sorry, warming uh, center we have at the transit, which for the users, it, we have transit employees, we have people seeking warmth, and we have patrons using the, the bus, which makes it very difficult for the people seeking warmth with, you know, it, it's hard to have security for all three parties. So it, it's created some challenges, but it, it's not the right spot, but it's the right now spot. And, you know, because of what we're doing and, and the need for it. So I've worked with, you know, staff and I've had some conversations with um, some of the councillors, and I just, I appreciate uh, Councillor Kungle's motion, and that's why I'm just adding to it, because she's requesting that the county report back on some other services, so that's pretty much what I'm looking for, but, you know, as the comment was made today, um, you know, this isn't a conversation for January, but at least in September, they report back, and we are able to, um, you know, pivot if we need to, or, you know, take uh, the, the measures necessary. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Thompson. Uh, Deputy Mayor Ward. Uh, thank you, Eileen. There was actually just one of the, a technical matter. The, um, there was a lot of back and forth between Councillor Thompson, myself and staff. The wording was slightly different, the final one. It actually, that the County of Simcoe be requested to work with the City of Barrie, with just that slight wording change. We actually have to request the county to work with us. We don't, we can't demand it. So that was the only change, but I'm fully in support of this motion. He gets all the latest copies. He's <laughs> on the inside. It's good to be deputy mayor. Uh, okay, uh, Councillor Natalie Harris. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Through you, uh, yeah, I support this 100%. I think it's a great addition to Councillor Kungle's um, uh, uh, invitation to present uh, and, and uh, Councillor Harvey and I have a little bit more of an addition into when we do an amendment for the task force housing task force but uh, I think this is excellent and again I agree it, you know the conversation around this is um, really excellent because like we said before uh, this can never happen again so I'm really happy this is here on the floor. Thanks Councillor Harris, Councillor Congo. Thank you, through you, Mayor Lehman, to Councillor Thompson and Deputy Mayor Barry Ward. Um, so just clarifying as this moves forward, completely uh, in support of it. Um, but as we are attaching it as a point two, 
and I know we're making reference to presentations. I'm just for clarity, I'm still seeing that these are two separate presentations because they're going to two separate bodies. Okay. Um, and I know that um, the September 12th was identified for general committee. And um, I wasn't sure if staff um, had any comment. Thank you for that clarification. And so through you, Mayor Lehman to staff, uh, is there a timeline that would be important to um, uh, try and have the County of Simcoe presentation to finance and corporate services? Because I believe some of that content could help uh, further staff conversations before we enter into our new service agreement. Ms. McAlpine. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Through you to Councillor Kungal. Thank you for the question. Um, County of Simcoe staff, I, I am aware, um, thanks to the great work of Greg Bishop, Wendy Hembrook, and Laura D'Ambrosio, that they have already been working on this in anticipation that this recommendation would be approved. Um, and uh, I would anticipate that they would be presenting um, this in either Q1 or Q2 to Finance and Corporate Services Committee. Okay, that's great. Thank you, no further questions and happy to support um, the amendment tabled. Thanks, did I see anyone else indicate on the amendment? Nope, um, okay, I will say uh, thank you uh, very much, Councillor Thompson and uh, Deputy Mayor Ward for bringing this forward. I think um, one of the things that has uh, emerged uh, in the uh, discussions over the last couple of weeks uh, is there is a great need for clarity as to um, who's doing what uh, in terms of warming centers. I think the, it is clear uh, from you know, the longstanding relationship that we have, our, the county is the social service delivery agency in Barrie, um, but warming centers, opening municipal buildings for warming has often been done by lower tier municipalities in the county and certainly by us in Aurelia and cities across the province. Uh, and that has, to some extent, clouded the who's who is responsible. Who's responsible shouldn't be the issue. The issue is that it get done. And uh, there were certainly a, a great deal of plans put in place earlier this year. So I guess the one comment I wanted to make uh, on this is uh, this is not in any way to uh, disparage the planning efforts that were undertaken this fall by the county, the shelters, uh, the agencies uh, in our area. But the fact remains that as the situation continued to change and especially with the rise of COVID and the fact that capacity restraints again became a significant issue, um, we ended up with the situation that we, uh, that we uh, found ourselves in over the last couple of weeks. So um, certainly a welcome, I think, uh, idea to get this in front of council earlier and to make it clear that um, what we wanna do is hear uh, from the county about uh, the coordination of this for next winter. So I'll support the amendment as well. And I, um, I was neglectful of in not reading Councillor um, Thompson's amendment uh, when he introduced it. Uh, I know it was circulated to members of council, but I'll just read it again uh, for due procedure here. Excuse me. <clears throat> there we are. Uh, that motion 22G, 002 of section A of the general committee report dated January 10th be amended by adding the following paragraph. The County of Simcoe work with the city of Barrie and appropriate, uh, the, the city requests that the County of Simcoe work with the city of Barrie and appropriate community partners on developing additional permanent warming space options. And that city staff report back to general committee on this item at their meeting scheduled for September 12th, 2022. So I'll call the question, those in favor of that amendment, please indicate. Those opposed. None, that carries. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Any other comments, questions or amendments on section A of the general committee report? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of section A as amended, please indicate. Are any opposed? None, that carries. Go ahead, uh, Deputy Mayor Ward, section B, please. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Thompson that section B of the general committee report dated January 10th, 2022 be received. Thank you. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Ward, seconded by Councillor Thompson, that Section B of the General Committee report dated January 10th, 2022 be received. This is just to receive the presentation of the Housing Affordability Task Force. It's not the motion that comes in Section D. So 
Uh, comments or questions? Seeing none, those in favor of receiving section B, receiving the report. Anybody opposed? None, that carries. Section C, please, Deputy Mayor Ward. Move by myself, seconded by Councillor Thompson. The Section C of the General Committee report dated January 10th, 2022 be adopted. Thank you, it's moved by Deputy Mayor Ward, seconded by Councillor Thompson. Section C of the General Committee report dated January 10th be adopted. This is with regards to the Holly Community Centre naming rights. First off, Councillor Natalie Harris. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. It's the same conflict that I mentioned before. Uh, I have a potential uh, conflict because my family also owns a, my family members also own a real estate agency business. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Madam Clerk, has Councillor Harris's potential interest been recorded? Yes, Mayor Lehman, it has. Thank you very much. Councillor Harvey. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Uh... I just want to touch base uh, on one thing that uh, the deputant brought up, and that was in regards to uh, this list that uh, existed from, uh, I believe it was 2017, because it does predate this, uh, this council, um, and the fact that uh, one of the identified uh, locations was removed from the list. Just wondering, uh, probably Miss James Reed would probably be the best one to answer this as to uh, what, which uh, location was removed from the list and, uh, and what would the rationale be for that removal? Ms. James Reed. Thank you, through you, Marley Minta, Councillor Harvey. Um, that's correct. On, on the original pilot list that was approved, South Shore Center was um, identified. And when we uh, went out um, to ask for sponsors on that, we did a RFI for that project. And at the time, the Rotary Club came forward and um, had a concern about that sponsorship because they had helped fund the building. And so it was removed from the list at that time. Great. And um, obviously, because the Holly Community Center has caused uh, quite a bit of uh, conversation, especially online, and I know with some of my residents, uh, whether they live in the ward or not, um, has there been any consultation uh, with the community in regards to the, uh, this uh, project moving forward with the Holly uh, Community Center? Again, th through you, Mary Lehman, to Councillor Harvey, um, as part of the pilot program that was identified and, and uh, brought forward in 2015 and 2017, there was not a uh, consultation that was built into that. The consultant recommended consultation occurring after the pilot had been completed. And at the time in 2017, Council identified these projects. And as you see, there's kind of a variety of city assets and parks and different things. Well, not park, but like a dog off leash park. Um, and the intent was that we would have the exploration as part of the pilot and then report back and at that time do consultation. So at this point, there has not been consultation other than the reports have always been public. They're on our website. We have a, um, a dedicated page for sponsorship on barry.ca slash sponsorship, but there was no consultation built into that process that was adopted previously by council. Okay, and just one last question. Um, I see Holly is the only community center that uh, that made that list. Uh, I was just wondering uh, how, if you can explain how that list was uh, was made up uh, as to why Holly's on it, whereas other community centers aren't. Uh, obviously, South Shore was on it at one point and isn't now. And and then it talks about uh, uh, Splash Pad and and some dog parks and things. Uh, very, very interested though, just to see how community uh, how Holly made the list but neither of the other community centers made the list. Uh, thank you, through you, Mayor Lehman. At the time, I, this will have to be a bit of a memory and from me, and I'm not sure if Mayor Lehman or uh, Deputy Mayor Ward may correct me or even Don McAlpine. Um, this portfolio at the time was not within my area, but my recollection of it was that um, Council at the time, again, at, as I was saying, wanted to pick different um, facilities and different type of um, naming um, to go forward. But it was with the intention that at the end of the pilot, when we report back, that the list would then be generated that would include some of the other community centers. So it's not intended that this be the only community center that was named. So this was just for the pilot to get some experience with um, the approach at the time um, that was recommended in 2017. Great, thank you. Um, uh, obviously, because we only get one time to chance to speak, uh, 
I just want to let everybody know that I, I will be changing my vote. Uh, I've heard it pretty loud and clear from everybody that I've spoken to. Um, well over 70% of the people that I've spoken to previous to last Monday and also during this week have uh, expressed concerns about uh, the naming. Nothing to do with the, uh, the, the vendor that has come forward. Uh, it's just solely, as we heard from uh, the deputant also, uh, the, the loss of the name Holly in, the, in this renaming. Um, so as a result, I, I will not be able to support this as we move forward. Um, it's just unfortunate that there wasn't any community consultation uh, prior to this coming forward, because uh, uh, I'll be quite honest with you, I wasn't aware of this list even existing. It predates this council. Uh, even though I did follow council quite closely, I, I don't I remember the discussions around it, but I do not recall this specific list existing. Um, for those reasons, I, I will not support it. Uh, as uh, I think as elected officials, we, uh, we do get elected to listen to our community. And I think it's quite clear that uh, they've made it uh, known that uh, they're not supportive of this. And I will leave it at that. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Harvey, other comments? I saw Councillor Morales and then Councillor Rigma. Thank you. Uh, Ms. James Reed, I have a quick question for you. The sponsorship policy that we adopted uh, on the previous council, is there anything in that sponsorship policy or anything in our facilities, um, uh, how we operate our facilities that will require that from the get go makes it clear that any future rec centers will like the names are up for grabs or up for consideration or is, is there no clear line in the sand for that. It, it, this is almost reminiscent to, you remember the school thing, uh, dual zoning, things of that nature. I just wanted to be clear. Um, I'm asking it now, even though we're not talking about future rec centers, because I think we're at, the concerns are comprehensive uh, in terms of sponsorship. Thank you for the question. It's um, not specifically identified in the policy that I can recall off the top of my head, but it would be our intention as we report back to council, as I indicated, um, we would be recommending that going forward that all new facilities would um, have the naming rights um, and should council support that recommendation. Uh, the experience in other municipalities is that those projects get a lot of value because you're coming in as the, the original name of the facility. So it's not explicitly in policy, but that is basically the practice that we are heading towards. Um, what we're planning to do as part of this sponsorship project is come back to council when the pilot is complete and then make a recommendation of all future buildings and what we would plan to um, put forward to council to consider for naming. And so we would include future buildings in that list of assets to be named. Okay, perfect. So I appreciate that. I think if that does come back with that recommendation of from the get-go, the name is up for consideration, I think would eliminate a lot of the unfortunate friction and concerns that all of council and specifically Councillor Harvey um, have had to deal with. That's all, Mayor Lehman. Councillor Reba. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, last week, I, I voted in favor of, of, of doing this, um, although I was uh, quite torn uh, by it because I'm I'm concerned about the, the overall direction of this, um, and um, and I, I you know I mean we certainly can't uh, fault our staff because they were they were doing exactly what the previous council um, uh, asked them to do, and um, and I suppose uh, the fact that we're here um, is on us. Um, my concern is like. Councilor, Har Councilor Harvey, that there's uh, no provision for uh, community uh, consultation um, in this. And I had thought last week that um, we might be able to salvage this by having Heritage Berry uh, do some work on it. Um, but I'm, I'm, I think, increasingly concerned about the overall loss of the Holly name. And, um, and it's, um, I think, it, you know, it's it's a community, and um, if, if we uh, take that name away, I think we lose something as a city. Uh, so, on that basis, I uh, I'm not going to support this this week. Thank you, Thanks, Councillor Eatma. Others who wish to comment, Councillor Congo. Thank you, Your Worship. I I guess I'll comment. Um, 
I too struggled with this and I guess where I've landed um, is um, after review of the Folsom strategy document and the policy behind it, recognizing that this was a process initiated. Um, I, uh, I did find it to be a strong document and some sound basis for us proceeding with the sponsorship program. I would like to see the program continue. Uh, I do find it regrettable that we're having this conversation about engagement. Um, and there's some really great content in that strategy that talks about the best interests of citizens uh, and uh, sponsors, sponsorship and guiding principles. And so um, I don't wanna undermine the program and would like to see it continue. So I'm for the program. Specific to Holly and the timing of this, um, I'm trying to balance the consideration with the Holly Library coming on board and maybe a, an approach that can be taken through Heritage where we are supporting a bit more of a, an integrated or holistic approach to recognizing the Hamlet and the previous history through maybe another approach, not just naming. So can we look beyond um, what the naming process is and also how we actually look at um, how we engage and acknowledge the history of the community um, through this process. I am keen to see staff coming back, um, whether it's this year or next term, somewhere for the public to talk a bit about um, what is the list of assets, um, what's the ranking, what are opportunities for resident engagement, how is Heritage very formally involved. But I, I guess at this point in time, I'm supportive of proceeding with the sponsorship and am hopeful that some of the funding or recommendations that come back from the Heritage Committee uh, can find funding to be implemented and we can actually look at a creative way in which we can engage residents in acknowledging the history of that space. Um, if we didn't have another facility coming online in that community with Holly recognized, I might feel a little bit differently, but I don't see it as a full loss. Uh, Thanks, to that, Councilor. I guess, oh. yeah, sorry. I guess I'll ask staff. Um, my understanding and still review of this is that there is a firm recommendation to be proceeding. And my other understanding, and I've heard from the deputant and comments from other councillors, while there might be preferences to see Holly remain in the naming, can you clarify? Is that a point of conversation? I don't under I don't believe that's a requirement. Um, but at this point in time. Um, my understanding is that formal naming uh, would actually be up to the, the sponsor in that agreement and we wouldn't be putting conditions uh, on that. Is that correct? Ms. James Reed. Thank you for the question through you, Mayor Lehman. Um, I, I'm not sure I, I totally understand the question. Um, are you asking if, if there's ability to add words to the existing name that's been offered? I guess in the, I'll reframe the question being, if for any naming convention of the exterior of a building, would it always be framed as the loss of the existing naming? So Holly or Allendale or East Bay Field, if I use community centers as an example, and that would always kind of be replaced with the sponsor, um, or is there room to engage in retention of aspects of naming? Or is that out of scope for any sponsorship from a naming convention? Okay, thank you for the clarification. Um, in terms of this particular name, the name that has been suggested is the Peggy Hill Team Community Center. And that's the offer that we've got before council. If council chooses to, um, to counter offer or to suggest something different, then you would have to give us that direction. And then we would speak with the sponsor and see if she is interested in that. Um, in terms of general practice, typically um, sponsorship, you remove the old name and you replace it with the new name. And then it does take some time, obviously, to transition all your assets and um, signage and, and everything that you have um, the name, whether it be, you know, the Molson Center to the Sideline Arena, it does take time for that transition. But typically, you don't leave the existing name on the building. And then last question for staff, Ms. James Reed, if I may, through you, Mayor Lehman. So this um, motion identifies an eight-year term, which I, I believe is best and better practice as identified through your consultant research. What does happen? I think it, uh, it was asked by the deputant after eight years, uh, if no other sponsorship uh, came forward, would it revert to the Holly Community Center? 
Thank you for the question. Uh, what we would intend to do is to go out to a um, public process like we did before, um, asking for interested parties to come forward, like an expression of interest. And we did this similarly um, when we needed to change the name from the Barry Molson Center when that um, contract was expiring. So in advance of the name changing, we would go out um, and seek interested parties. And um, that is including the existing sponsor to see if um, the Peggy Hill team was interested in renewing the naming. So it is a public process that we would go out and ask. If um, we didn't get a sponsor, then I think I would have to bring a report back to council and get council direction as to how you'd like to proceed. Thank you. And finally, could you confirm that some of the funds that are tied to the sponsorship are allocated to um, in some way the benefit of residents or into community events that would be operating through that community center? Could you share more about how that funding actually benefits residents? Sure. Um, thank you for the question. The, um, the existing uh, offer that you have before you includes a um, improved gathering space in the lobby area of the facility. So this would be a direct benefit to the residents and any visitors using our facility in that there's going to be new furniture and kind of a nice kind of gathering space where people are waiting for their family members to finish their swimming lessons or um, come out of the change room from the, um, the gym or the arena. Um, there is also included in the contract um, a, a certain number of hours a, per year for the value of $2,000 for the um, Peggy Hill team to use for community events and um, activities. And so that would be up to her discretion in consultation with our recreation staff as to how she's going to use that. And that's um, and then the additional revenue that is brought in goes into the city's general revenue to help offset um, tax uh, increases through the um, city's general um, advertising revenue account. Thank you, Ms. James Reed. No further comments or questions. Thanks, Councillor Kungle. I think somebody else had indicated others wish to speak to this item. Uh, sorry, I did see Jim Harris, Councillor Jim Harris and then Deputy Mayor Ward, go ahead. Hey, thank you, Mayor Lehman. Um, uh, through you to staff, I, I'm pretty sure I understand the sensitivity to the Holly name. I just, for the area, I just wanted to be clear in my recollection that the elementary school immediately beside the Holly, current Holly Rec Center is called Holly Meadows. Is that, I don't know if through you to staff, is that correct? Maybe Miss James Reed? I'm wondering if maybe Don McAlpine would have that information. Ms. McAlpine. Yes, that is correct. That is the uh, name of the elementary school that's uh, directly next door to the center. Okay, thank you. And am I correct that the park right behind the Holly Community Center is called Holly Park? Is that correct? Through Mayor Lehman to you, Councillor Jim Harris, I believe that is the current name as well. Okay, thank you. And just maybe one final question. Is it our intention to call the new library that doesn't currently, that's opening the Holly Library? Mayor Lehman, through you to Councillor Jim Harris, I spoke with library staff this uh, past week and they confirmed that that's, that is the intent to refer to it, to call it the Holly uh, Branch Library, similar to the Painswick one. Great, thank you. Um, and maybe my other questions, I have had some questions um, about the um, valuation of the um, naming rights agreement and, and maybe to satisfy some of those folks uh, who are not concerned about the name, but about the value. If I know we use the Center for Excellence in Public Marketing, Public Sector Marketing uh, to kind of help us establish the value to, um, uh, to make this agreement. I wonder if uh, Mary Raymond, through you, I could ask Ms. Rebecca James Reed to give a bit of an explanation of how um, our consultant uh, got to this um, valuation <clears throat> and maybe in the contract, some people have asked about the term and that there not be a inflation kind of uh, index built in over time and how these kind of contracts are designed. So maybe if you could give us some detail for those who are curious about how we got to the valuation and why there was no inflation um, factor built in. Thank you so much. Thank you for Ms. the question. Uh, thank you. I'm going to invite um, Kim Breeden, our sponsorship coordinator, to join the call and answer that because she worked very closely with the um, Center for Excellence on that. So, Kim? Ms. Breeden. 
Hello, thank you, Councillor Harris. Um, I'd like to answer, can everybody hear me? Wonderful. Yeah. Um, what happened is I came um, into this program in August of 2019, and this study was done in 2015, the value. And so I had to reassess what that value was and if it still was that value. So what I did is I consulted the rec department, the traffic department, the marketing and communications department. What I was looking for was um, traffic. So traffic counts outside, traffic counts inside. So I analyzed that for all assets that were in this pilot project. And therefore I put them into a chart using the studies uh, values that he had given us to get a final um, value. And in if you read that document, it also talks about intangible and tangible value. It's a two for one. We're trying to give two for one value for every asset. Some are a little lower and some are a little higher. It was surprising how close the values were. Um, with the Holly Rec Center, it was slightly lower than the 80,000. And then we added the Todd sign to that package to increase the value. And then upon negotiation, because all of these packages are negotiable with a client, depending on what they're, they're um, looking for. And therefore, when we went and we were um, speaking with Peggy Hill team, we added the mats at the entrances, both of the entrances and the lounge area. Um, so the value came up to slightly above the 80,000. And that's how, so because I was new to the city, I had to contact the rec department for traffic counts, the outside traffic counts, the communications for all of the internal, how many people view our website, how many people get our rec guide. So I was quite thorough and I made spreadsheets based on Bernie's tier one and tier two. And you'll see that in that document, that 76 page document, um, because I had to be sure of the cost. In terms of inflation, um, what's happening with sponsorships is they are not going on forever. In the past, sponsorships were for a long time, 20 years, 25 years. So what's happened in sponsorships is the terms are lower and that helps it fight inflation. Um, but we do not currently anywhere in the program have an escalator. And it may be something that we may wanna look at, especially considering inflation these days. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it does. Thank you. It, uh, it does. And just maybe one final question. You know, I, I understand and, and some residents, one of the information that we have access to, I just wanted to maybe for the benefit of residents, maybe uh, through you, Marilyn Edmonton, Ms. James Reed, um, it, this is not unique to Barry. the um, opportunity that's presented through naming rights of facilities. Are there any other, are there any, um, uh, municipalities in the you know large um, urban um, uh, category that aren't doing this. Thank you Ms. for James the question. Reed. Thank you for the question. We do have some information from the Center for Excellence in um, the marketing, and they've indicated that a hundred percent of the municipalities of a hundred thousand population and old more um, are in the sponsorship business. So you're right. This is certainly not unique, um, and you can point to many. Um, community centers within the GTA that have naming that you would recognize like the Magna Center, the Stronic Arena, um, and many others. Okay, thank you. I have no further questions. Thank you again. Thanks, Councillor Harris. Uh, Councillor Thompson. I think Deputy Mayor Ward was my apologies. I, yeah, it was Deputy Mayor. The insider. I don't want to get into <laughs> that. <laughs> I'll let Deputy you speak Mayor after me, Robert. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just wanted to say I'll support the renaming. I mean, if we want to change the policy, we can direct staff that we want the policy changed. But at this point, it's much too late to pull out of this. It was a deal negotiated in good faith by both Peggy Hill team and staff. We have this before us now. It's I can't imagine the message it's going to send. I mean, we've kind of handled the renaming of the Molson Center in a rather clumsy manner back then. If we pull out of this now, good luck to us going forward of ever getting the sponsor of ever having a sponsorship policy. I mean, we're about to embark on a few major projects such as the uh, naming of a performing arts center and possibly sponsors for things like the downtown market. I can't imagine the task we're gonna ask somebody to go out there and try to sell naming if we, if we at the last minute decide we don't want to rename the Peggy Hill Center. It's our policy. If we don't like the policy, we can change it, but we shouldn't pick out one 
the first, very first big naming opportunity we have and say, no, we don't like it, we're not gonna do it. So, thank you. Thanks, Deputy Mayor Ward. Now you get uh, Councillor Thompson. Thanks, Mayor Lehman. Um, maybe through you to um, Councillor Reitman or Councillor Jim Harris or Rebecca, uh, Miss Reed. Um, in, uh, with working with Heritage Berry, with the history of Holly, um, on the plaque or whatever's decided by that, um, you know, I find it funny that we pick and choose the history we want to speak of. Um, so if maybe we could, uh, you know, acknowledge the, uh, the indigenous community, um, you know, the, the little family were the first settlers. So I, I just think that the heritage complete should be uh, something that, that's on the plaque as well in, in respect to that. Ms. James Reed, um, I think Councillor Thompson makes an excellent point. Uh, the history of Holly is, goes back to time in Memorial Hill and certainly there are a number of Huron Wendat and other settlements that have been found uh, in the area. Um, I trust that, I, you know, as we put together the history of Holly, uh, staff would be looking at uh, history all the way back, not just uh, since European settlement in the area. Thank you, Mayor Lehman, and thank you, Councillor Thompson. Um, certainly that is a wonderful um, addition and we will um, be meeting with Heritage Berry and bringing that forward. And I'm sure we will um, have a, a lovely uh, um, commemoration within the building. Councillor Thompson, you're good. Okay, uh, any other comments, members of council? Okay, seeing none, uh, there are a few things I did wanna say about this. Um, you know, I think the, the desire to recognize the history of a community actually is, is very valid. Um, and it is commonly the case when you get a fast growing city like ours, uh, that uh, the smaller communities that once existed um, can uh, get lost in the urbanization of the, of the community. Just ask the residents of Hespeler or Preston or Galt, which are now all part of the city of Cambridge, uh, or indeed any of the other small communities that once made up uh, Barry. So, and uh, Councillor Thompson, thank you for making that uh, point that uh, as we recognize the history of our community, um, there are thousands and thousands of years of history to tell, uh, not just um, uh, the last 200 years. So I think um, one of the things that's come out of this with the excellent amendment that Councillor Jim Harris uh, brought forward last week is that uh, we have the opportunity now for all of the visitors to this community center to learn a bit about the history of that area of our city and to recognize the history of Holly, the name, uh, the little family, uh, but very importantly, all the history uh, that has come before as well. And um, I, you know, I think compared to what we have today in terms of recognizing that history in that neighborhood and in that community, uh, that will be a significant uh, advantage, improvement. Now, in terms of the name that goes on the building uh, and the fact that the community center has the name of the, of the community, you know, I can accept concern about loss of, of the name Holly, but I think what is being done to recognize the history of the community, um, the full history of it, I think will be a very important and additional step. Uh, and of course, I think as was noted tonight, the Holly name survives in a library, a school, a park, uh, and there are certainly other opportunities as well as we move forward. Um, I think it would be a very poor message to send to change direction at this 11th and a half hour. Uh, it would, uh, I agree with Deputy Mayor Ward, constitute bad faith after uh, negotiating for some time uh, with council approval to pursue this. And um, I, I think the, uh, the fact is the, uh, I, I think a good point was made around uh, should these funds um, be tied in some way to improvements to our rec center, to maintenance of those one things that make this our flagship of our community centers, the, the uh, you know, the toys and the water slide that are uh, bring so much joy to the kids, uh, the pool, the building itself. Uh, I, I can see doing that. I think going forward from this, one of the things that might help um, with, um, you know, public understanding of why council chose to pursue this would be to tie the funds raised from sponsorship to the areas of the corporation, the areas of services that we deliver to the public that would be funded by them. Um, this is not new. 
We have uh, the Sadlin Center. We have Schmidt and Shaw Stadium at the Sports Park, which has had a number of different berry companies' names on it over the years. Uh, and uh, of course, we have uh, the Five Points Theater, presented by Pratt Homes. Uh, all of those sponsorship agreements have raised something in the order of, uh, including, if we include this one, over $3 million, which doesn't have to come out of our taxpayers' pockets. And anytime uh, we raise money as the city of Barrie through any other than ta taxation revenue source, it benefits our residents because we spend it back on the things that benefit our community. But I do think uh, it would probably help this particular policy to, to in some way tie the funds raised back to the type of facility that um, uh, it could be spent on. And then the last thing I wanna say is um, both Peggy Hill and I learned this week that no good deed goes unpunished. Uh, you know, I, I did some class visits and probably had lots of snark about that online. And I think it's deeply, deeply unfortunate, some of the comments that were made uh, online about this particular arrangement. Uh, we as Barry City Council, on behalf of our community, should give a full-throated thank you to Peggy Hill for coming forward and wanting to do this. Uh, yes, it's not a donation. This is a sponsorship. I don't want to, uh, you know, position this in a different way. Uh, but under no circumstances should Ms. Hill or her company in any way have taken uh, any kind of negativity around uh, this support. Uh, it is not about that. And, and uh, to, be, to be honest, uh, I'm delighted that it's somebody who lives in the area, uh, who built a business here. This is not a global company coming to throw their brand on one of our rec centers. This is, this is not some... Uh, you know, uh, uh, American company or somebody who is wanting to build their name locally. This is a local resident uh, who has contributed a lot over the years and uh, now wishes to do this. And, and uh, I think we should say thank you for it. So uh, I am absolutely going to be supporting this. Uh, the last comment I will make is to the extent, and, and Councillor Harvey raised the point, and I think um, another member of council that you know, when there are these situations where a previous council adopts a, a program, staff go away and do exactly what they're directed to do and they bring it back and, and it becomes new to those members of council um, who are faced with the decision. I, I think we can communicate a little more. And I think um, going forward from this, uh, this is why it's a pilot project. Uh, there can be the opportunity to do these sorts of things in advance. I mean, we, I've learned a bit from this. I've learned quite a bit about um, some of the, the sort of uh, previous century's history of Holly. Um, I think there's a lot more we can learn and bring to our, our public. But this is one of the things that we can do. If we are replacing a neighborhood name or something like that at any point, um, there is the opportunity for us to take it as a, as a chance to educate our residents about what that name represents. And so I would, uh, I think, you know, staff of have heard that as part of this discussion and as we move forward with future opportunities, um, I, I hope we can do that. Um, but most of all, I mean, this is being done to raise funds uh, that help, get, help us keep taxes down and which benefit our residents. Uh, and, uh, and for that reason, I'm going to support it. And I'll call the question on it. Uh, so it's on section D. Those in favor of section D, please indicate. I am as well in favor, opposed, three. So that carries by those voting. Uh, and I believe that is six to three. Uh, Councillor Harris had a conflict. Councillor McCann has dropped off the call. Okay. Thank you, members of council. Let's move on. Deputy Mayor Ward. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Thompson, that section D of the general committee report dated January 10th, 2022 be adopted. All right, and of course my screen has timed out. Um, that's how long my speech was. Okay, uh, it is moved by Deputy Mayor Ward, seconded by Councillor Thompson that section D uh, of the general committee report dated January 10th, 2022 be adopted. This is the Housing Affordability Task Force recommendations. Councillor Natalie Harris, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. I have an amendment seconded by Councillor Harvey to put on the floor. Uh, so it is that staff in the corporate facilities department 
prepare a fulsome report for general committee concerning possible ways to use city facilities for warming spaces beyond the transit terminal, such as the city hall rotunda and the hiring of security that is trained in de-escalation techniques. And I can speak to that. Okay, and I am just trying to call that one up here as well. Bear with me, uh, Councillor Harris. Okay, it's here at the end. Okay, it is moved by Councillor Natalie Harris and seconded by Councillor Gary Harvey that motion 22 G07 of section D of the general committee report dated January 10th, 2022 be amended by adding the following paragraph that staff be directed to prepare a fulsome report regarding possible ways to use city facilities beyond the transit terminal for warming, such as the city hall rotunda, and that the report consider the hiring of security trained in de-escalation techniques to staff these locations. Go ahead, Councillor Natalie Harris. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Uh, so there's some things obviously that have come up now because of the pandemic, like we've said over this conversation, that um, there are very few areas, if any, that are unhoused can go to warm in the winter right now. So uh, I'm, I, I love the amendment that came forward with respect to the presentation to the county, but this is, is, is really focused on the city. And, and I get that the city, um, or sorry, that the County of Simcoe is our service provider for social services. Um, but now that times have changed and everything has really, uh, it needs to be reconsidered. I think that the answers that I have received so far as to why we can't use the rotunda um, are just not good enough with respect to what we are dealing with with the pandemic now and spaces that are available. So that's why this is brought forward. And also, and I also said an area outside of the transit terminal because the transit terminal, like um, Councillor Thompson said, is is problematic sometimes because it's it's quite busy, and um, these individuals are sometimes just like I said, looking to be, be warm, and it's not very private. It's not it's not a very um, it's it's just not ideal because it's so full of traffic all the time. So, uh, and the other thing that I wanted to bring forward was. This is a very important part um, of this collaboration. So, and no offense at all to the security contract that the city has uh, made and the employees that are, you know, doing their jobs to the best of their abilities in, in the transit terminal. But uh, a lot of the security services do not have de-escalation training. And unfortunately, um, stigma is alive and well. And what's happening is these individuals are not necessarily being treated um, mm -hmm. fully respectfully. So I'm not gonna get into the details because I'm sure I, I, there's always two sides to every story. Actually, there's usually three, but I think it would be in our benefit to make sure that going forward, these security uh, personnel really have training in, in how to, to collaborate, de-escalate and, and cooperate with all of the people that would use a warming center in our city. Uh, so that's something that I think we should definitely highlight. Okay, thanks, Councillor Harris. Any further comments on the amendment? Councillor Congo. Thank you, through you, Mayor Lehman, to Councillor Natalie Harris. Um, just building off the context of the conversation with the County of Simcoe for September, is this aimed at looking at options now within this winter or really around building out a, a plan and a strategy that could come to the table with County of Simcoe and be part of a bit more of an approach in preparation for next winter? That's a great question. My hope is to get that conversation started as soon as possible. I didn't really add a date to it so that we could start now. Um, but I think whatever is collected and brought forward with respect to this is, is part of the fulsome report that even can be contributed to the county. So um, there, there are just so many gaps that any information that we collect, I think, is, is going to help with your presentation as well. So I'm not sure if you are interested in, in making them a timeline for this report back. I'm fine with that, with adding a date, um, because I think it would help. 
And it was um, less about the date, but more about if the expectation was around seeing a change this winter with security or other aspects, and if that was a viable option considering where we're at in the winter. So I don't have any recommended changes, more just for clarity about um, what staff are being asked for and if there was an intention to um, try and see some of those changes this winter. Yeah, that's a great question. And I, and I hate that it's already January 17th, right? That's the, the unfortunate part of it. So I, I'm, I'm not expecting that there is going to be able to um, be new training to the security staff this winter um, un under such short notice. And luckily, there are daytime uh, warming hours that are starting at Trinity Anglican Church starting on J uh, January 21st. And we're very, very close to getting a location for the nighttime warming center. And these centers will be uh, trained uh, with trained security um, that basically know what it's like to um, be in the recovery world and to be part of that community and, and, and really see our, our unhoused as, as human and, and just uh, battling different illnesses and situations and trauma and those types of things that maybe someone walking down the sidewalk might not be battling. Um, hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, that's great. Thank you. So um, no further comments and um, happy to support the amendment. Thanks, Councillor Congo. Councillor Harvey, and then Councillor Morales. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Yeah, I'm uh, very supportive of this when uh, Councillor Harris and I uh, spoke of this uh, uh, earlier today. And uh, I think too, like, I mean, even though really this warming piece does fall under the county's purview, um, we need to have a backup plan. And we need to have a backup plan yesterday not today. And this will put us in a much better position uh, for, for the following season. So that way we're not having this discussion on January 17th. Even when we had the discussion last week and uh, the motion to uh, lower the, uh, the temperature uh, when it uh, would enact a warming center to minus 20, it was minus 24 that night. And I just about froze my butt off trying to clean my car off when I was leaving my full-time job. I could not imagine spending a night out in this type of weather. Um, so we, we need to be better prepared um, whether it's a city facility or whether it's another facility in the area where the vast majority of uh, these unhoused peoples are, are um, we need to be prepared because we're not prepared right now, unfortunately. And uh, uh, I don't think uh, we can necessarily always just rely on uh, the county. And this is, this is going to be a very good backup plan for us to be prepared if the county is not prepared the way uh, we would all expect them to be. And the piece around uh, the security officers uh, having de-escalation techniques, I cannot talk about how important that is. You cannot just put any individual who has literally just passed a security license into a situation like this that doesn't understand where these people have been and where they are potentially going. You have to have a full understanding and some compassion to be able to deal with these people. And uh, no, no bad about any of the security officers around. There's a lot of really great security officers, but it's critical to have them specifically trained in de-escalation de techniques. And even more specifically, when it comes to uh, specific issues around uh, the unhoused people that we have in our city. So that way they have a better understanding when they're dealing with them uh, in certain situations. Thanks, Councillor Harvey. Councillor Morales? Um, I've answered my own question, thank you. Okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor Ward? Just a question of clarification for the movers of the motion, because it doesn't actually say, but are staff looking at all facilities in the city or the downtown facilities? Oh, that, yeah, that's a great point. We should specify it would be in the downtown area. That's uh, transportation is um, an issue a lot of times. So the closer, the better, especially if it's for in the winter during extreme cold, uh, walking from one place to another. So um, I'm good with a friendly if we can change that. Or I don't, don't think you need it. Just give staff direction. Just to give it. Okay, perfect. Perfect. But I just yeah. wasn't clear on that. And, and I guess I'm having hard, I mean, we'll see for the staff report, but I have a hard time thinking about what we have besides the library, the fire hall and the rotunda. I mean, I'm not sure if we've got any other facilities in the downtown, but I guess we'll see when we get the report back. 
And I will, I just once again for direction, I'm hoping staff will consult with the users of those facilities. For example, the farmer's market uses the rotunda. So I'd hope they'd be consulted at least before, you know, in the final report, which I'm sure staff will consult with the groups that are using the facilities now. So thanks, I'll support it. Thanks, Deputy Mayor Ward. Any other comments on the amendment? Um, the only thing, okay, go ahead, Councilor Congo. Thank you. Um, through um, Mayor Lehman, Sorry, I guess. Sorry, Councilor Congo, you did speak before, so just maybe a, a quick, uh, a quick final question or. A point of clarification for Deputy yeah. Mayor. So uh, around facilities, I mean, and maybe this is to the movers of the motion. I mean, does it have to be city facilities? There are great partnerships that I think have been even brainstormed and coming about. So are we being quite restrictive or could there be a partnership opportunity where we're looking at city resources, be it security contracts or otherwise, or funding, but does it have to be a city facility? Uh, yeah, through you, Mayor Lehman. My focus is on city buildings at this time because that's really what we can control. So uh, collaboration, uh, beyond that is going to happen uh, anyways. And, and I think right now, if we need to, if we can expand on that afterwards. Um, but I still think that if we keep this to the city buildings, that's what I'm uh, looking for right now. Thanks, Councilor Kungle. Any other comments? Um, I just make a couple. I mean, I think our, our CAO had indicated to council back in uh, in uh, November that this report should be requested if it was something that council wanted to look at. So, you know, I'll support the amendment on on that level. Um, I think the um, uh, the important point was made, though. Uh, we have organizations in our community who are specifically trained, have a mandate and are committed to supporting our unhoused. Uh, quite a number of those organizations, in addition to our four incredible shelter providers that have already been mentioned a few times tonight. Um, and, you know, I think the discussion around uh, private security personnel having the right training to deal with the unhoused, my take on that is they're not the right people to deal with the unhoused. We, we need those agencies who are trained and committed to and resourced to support the unhoused to be operating the warming facility. So, um, you know, that's independent of the question of where it occurs. Um, my, uh, but my take on it would be uh, that, you know, the city, we, we don't have folks in-house that are trained to do that. And, um, you know, the, the response that we can bring to this uh, last week, which I thought was a good one, was to fund uh, a local organization to provide additional staff to staff a warming center. I think that's the right way to do it. And I, I very much agreed with last week's amendment. Um, I think this discussion around the use of city uh, buildings, uh, it, it's a good, it is the good conversation to have. Um, but my own take uh, before I call the question is that um, we should, you know, in, in that report recognize that we should be partnering with an agency that has that uh, staff ability uh, to, uh, to deliver warming services. Uh, whether or not that occurs in one of our buildings or another building in the downtown, it's obviously needed, but it needs to be staffed by those who, who are trained to support our unhoused community. Um, sorry, Councillor Natalie Harris, just something on process because you did already speak, I think. I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, I guess it is process and I know that you're uh, last to speak, but I, uh, to clarify, uh, it, it would be the, the intention is to have it uh, staffed by trained agencies for sure. Um, Okay. I don't know if you need that in the amendment. Um, it, yeah, just because it isn't in it, uh, I think it would be better. But I don't think staff are going to come back with anything different anyway. Okay. <laughs> I do. I do think uh, they uh, are likely to say that we have organizations in our community. This is not something that the city does or trains our staff to do. Um, and we have tremendous uh, organizations in Barrie who are trained to do it. So um, I'm not sure you need it in the amendment because I expect we'll get that answer. But uh, if if we don't. We can remember that we could have asked for it tonight. Okay, I'll call the question on the amendment. Uh, those in favor of this amendment, please indicate. Any opposed? None, that carries. Thank you uh, both. Councillors Harvey and Natalie Harris. Uh, on the motion as amended, any further comments or questions on the housing task force piece? Okay, I uh, gave some remarks last week. I won't give more tonight. I'm simply gonna say thank you to members of council. Um, this, uh, there are a number of things to 
to be frank, in these recommendations that most previous city councils would probably have choked on. Um, there are some substantial changes, uh, from, uh, directions in terms of particularly planning policy that uh, take us from sort of being in the middle of the pack to being at the front of the pack in terms of our approach to housing policy, uh, certainly among medium-sized cities. And I think that's a point that we can all be proud of. Uh, I'm proud of you for all of us <laughs> for having the willingness to take a look at doing these. And while it's just the beginning of the process to introduce some of these changes, I think housing as of right and commercial strips uh, shared and eliminating parking requirements are very progressive planning policies. But it's a number of the other things that have been outlined in this document by way of process uh, and support for uh, supportive and social housing uh, that ultimately can make the big difference in our community. Um, on the uh, the one matter which is in the, in the motion, uh, subject uh, that we uh, have to have a separate in-camera discussion on related to projects. Um, I do intend to, I'm hoping that we can do that next week, just waiting for a little bit more information actually from the county to confirm that we're able to do that. Uh, but then uh, we need to move forward with all good speed on that aspect of this task force as well. But uh, really that's a long way of saying thank you. I think this is something we could be proud of as a, as a council and uh, look forward to, to implementing over the coming years to bring down the cost of housing in Barrie. Okay, and with that, I'll call the question. Uh, those in favor of the motion as amended? Are any opposed? None, that's unanimous. Thank you very much, members of council. Okay, uh, I believe that completes the committee reports, unless I'm mistaken, Deputy Mayor Ward. That is it. You have the inside track. Okay. Uh, we have no deferred items, direct motions or presentations tonight. It brings us to inquiries of staff. Deputy Mayor Ward, do you have any inquiries of staff? I do not. Uh, I am going to ask Mr. Friary how it's going out there. Uh, I think um, this it's always the first really bad day that we get a lot of inquiries from our residents about winter maintenance. Uh, Mr. Friary, I'm sure uh, this has been one of the tougher days of the year for our talented operators, but could you tell us how the cleanup is going and how we expect it to go from here? I uh, also wanted to give you the opportunity to talk about that significant uh, weather event tonight, um, which uh, I know the city has declared. So uh, Mr. Friary. You worship and members of council. Um, I just checked uh, our plow tracker, which all residents can do if they go onto the city's website, type in plow tracker. Uh, there's currently 15 plows in the road uh, right now. There is a shift change going on. So we do have our evening shift coming in now. So they're handing off the plows to another group of employees who are out. Uh, they've been out since uh, last night when the uh, snow began. Uh, and, and it has been a little bit of a challenge due to the duration of the storm and the accumulation rate of, of the snow that came down. So we'll continue to work. Uh, into the morning and, and with any luck, most streets uh, will be done by tomorrow morning for the commute. It's supposed to be a nicer day tomorrow. Uh, we did declare a significant weather event and the uh, residents shouldn't notice any difference in, in service when we declare that event. That just allows us a little bit extra time to uh, clean up just in case we have breakdowns um, you know, equipment issues, staff issues. It just allows us a little bit more time uh, when we're dealing with the municipal maintenance standards for highways. So it gives us just a little bit of extra time, that's all. But uh, with any luck, uh, fingers crossed, we'll have everything all cleaned up by tomorrow. Thank you very much, Mr. Friary. Um, I had the opportunity to give a brief interview on CTV Newsnet today about our cleanup efforts. And uh, Marcia Yin said to me, well, I guess you guys in Barrie are probably a little bit more used to this than us in Toronto. And I said, yes, what you call in Toronto a blizzard, we call Monday. Uh, but that's <laughs> only because we have a team like Mr. Friaries that we can have confidence in cleaning up afterwards. Uh, other questions, inquiries of staff? Councillor Congle. Thank you through you, Mayor Lehman. Um to staff, um, I guess it's just around the communications. Uh, my understanding is if residents were expecting their um, waste recycling pickup today and it didn't occur, um, maybe due to inaccess or, or issues with our garbage um, service trucks, getting to all homes as scheduled, that they are still to put it out for tomorrow and anything missed will get picked up tomorrow morning. Is that correct? Ms. James Reed, are you able to speak to that? 
Yes, thank you for the inquiry, uh, Councillor Kungal. That is correct. Um, leave the garbage out in the morning and uh, the contractor will do their best to get there. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Kungal. Any other inquiries of staff? Seeing none, announcements. Deputy Mayor Ward. I have none. Members of Council, do you have any announcements? Councillor Kungal, go ahead. Can I make a point of recognition of staff and announcement? I'm hoping I can. Um, and um, I'm going to ask if I can speak on behalf of um, Ward 3, 4, and 5. Um, we had our town hall last week uh, for residents that may have missed it. Uh, you can access that recording through the YouTube, uh, through the city's channel. We had some great dialogue uh, and we're joined by Barry Police Services, which um, is appreciated as always. But I did want to, if I may, say thank you to Lauren um, in the mayor's office. So Lauren often is behind the scenes, but does such a beautiful job around engaging residents to fully be able to participate while we are still online. And so I think we had somewhere between 45 and maybe 55 participants. And um, you just did a quite a lovely job, Lauren. And so thank you for that. I had lots of compliments from residents that um, joined the meeting and did really appreciate your uh, facilitation. Thank you very much for that recognition uh, for um, Ms. Wild, uh, Councillor Congo. I think she does an incredible job as well. And you know, it's something, this, these town halls is uh, not something that every municipality does. Uh, and the fact that um, Lauren has got so good at uh, directing traffic, making sure everybody gets a chance. And if they don't, if for whatever reason we can't answer a question or we can't get to everybody, uh, we follow up afterwards. And that's something that um, not everyone sees the, the follow ups after each town hall, uh, both to get additional information and the work that she does to respond to, to residents uh, from that. So thank you very much for that. Uh, any other announcements? Councillor Jim Harris. Yeah, thank you, Mary. And I'll be quick. And thank you, Councillor Congo, for the, the prompt. I, uh, there's a uh, Ward 8 uh, town hall uh, happening on February 23rd, so uh, uh, in just over a month away. So look forward to getting information out and keep your eyes peeled to the city channels. And if you have any questions or, or thoughts prior, please email me at jim.harris at barry.ca and happy to take any uh, thoughts, recommendations for items and things we should be covering uh, at our um, town hall. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Harris. Any other announcements? Okay, uh, seeing none, I actually just have a few tonight. Uh, the City of Barrie invites places of worship and owners of institutionally zoned properties to help the municipality find ways to create more affordable housing options in the city. This is through the new initiative called New Foundations. For more information on the New Foundations initiative, you can visit barrie.ca slash new foundations. And of course, that was something that came out of the housing task force that we just approved today. Uh, submissions for the Arts and Culture Investment Program are now being accepted. The program's goal is to strengthen our arts and culture sector through strategic investments in the work of artists and creative organizations. Deadline for submissions is January 31st at 4.30. There's more information at barry.ca slash cultural grants. We're also inviting students at uh, this time of year from kindergarten to grade 12 to share their love of the city with the Love Barry contest that runs until the 28th of January. Kindergarten to grade six students can submit a piece of artwork, grade seven and eight, a short story, and grade nine to 12 students, a photo. For more information, visit barry.ca slash myberry. Uh, and uh, yes, as a reminder, uh, tonight, uh, especially with the cleanup, uh, curb collection can be become a little more difficult and, and it can be tough, I know, to place your recycling bins or garbage bins uh, in the right spot, but it is important to keep them out of the path of snow removal equipment. Uh, otherwise, you may not find them till April or you may find them all over your driveway, unfortunately. Um, so if you can, uh, please put them beside, not on the uh, snow banks and certainly not in front of them on the road. Uh, and uh, if you put them up on top, it can make it impossible actually for the collectors to, uh, to access them given the way the vehicles are aligned. So uh, there are, there's actually information and tips on the website on how to do this, uh, but we appreciate anything you can do to help by uh, the waste collectors do that. Uh, and a reminder as well of Snow Angels Canada. If you have trouble shoveling the end of your driveway, I know there may be a few people who wake up tomorrow morning and find that uh, the end of their driveway has a fair bit of snow in it. Uh, if you have mobility challenges or are otherwise unable to clear the end of your 
driveway, you can reach out to Snow Angels Canada. It is snowangelscanada.ca and ask that to volunteer come and help you with clearing the end of your driveway. Of course, the overnight parking restrictions are in effect until March. Uh, we have planning committee to, uh, tomorrow night, members of city council at seven o'clock, including uh, the presentation, the final presentation on the uh, official plan uh, and discussion of that. Uh, next general committee meeting will be Monday, January 24th. And with that, the bylaws, Deputy Mayor Ward. Always like the first bylaws of the year. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Thompson, that leave be granted to introduce the following bills and these bills be read a first, second, and third time this day and finally passed. Bills one, two, three, and four. That's amazing. That's the combination on my luggage. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Ward, seconded by Councillor Thompson, that leave be granted to introduce the following bills and these bills be read a first, second, and third time this day and finally passed. Bill one, two, three, and four. Any comments or questions on the bylaws? Seeing none, we'll call the question. Those in favor? Are any opposed? None. That carries. Move by myself, Mayor. seconded by Councillor Thompson, that Lee be granted to introduce the following bill. This bill be read a first, second, and third time this day and finally passed, Bill 5. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Ward, seconded by Councillor Thompson, that Lee be granted to introduce the following bill. And this bill be read a first, second, and third time this day and finally passed, Bill 5. Comments or questions? Seeing none. Those in favor of the confirmation bylaw? Are any opposed? None. That carries. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Councillor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Congo. 